Hugh Trenchard is often referred to as the father of the Royal Air Force, having helped to form it from the Royal Flying Corps and the Royal Naval Air Service. He continued to lay its foundations during its first few years as an independent branch of the British Armed Forces. He was a man who not only had an incredibly interesting life, but also an extremely significant impact on the British Armed Forces. Before we look at the impact he made, we will look at his life as a whole. Trenchard was born in 1873 in Somerset. His father was a former captain in the army and his mother was the daughter of a Royal Navy captain, so he grew up surrounded by the military. He never excelled academically, preferring to hunt and ride and spending most of his time outdoors. Aged 10, Trenchard was sent to boarding school. His academic struggle did not greatly concern his parents, who saw him pursuing a military career. His mother wanted him to join the Royal Navy following in the footsteps of her father. However, he failed the entrance exams, so he set his sights on the army instead. After several failed attempts, he finally joined the army in 1893 and was appointed second lieutenant in the Royal Scot Fusiliers. His first posting was to India. Upon arrival, he was told to make a speech about the Royal Scot Fusiliers, which was a tradition for the most junior officer. However, instead of creating a speech, he thought it funnier to simply say, I am deeply proud to belong to this great regiment. I hope one day I shall live to command it. Soon after, he was sent back home for a hernia operation, hoping to rejoin his battalion soon. Trenchard was desperate to go back to the military, as that year the Second Boer War had begun. Eventually, he went to South Africa and was placed in charge of a mounted company due to his polo skills. Sadly, during a clash with the Boers in 1900, he was shot in the chest with a damaged left lung and he was left paralysed from the waist down as a fragment of the bullet had become lodged within his spine. Having returned to England injured, Trenchard was advised to spend several months in Switzerland as the air would benefit his lung. There he took up bobsteading, a pastime which required very little use of the legs. Eventually he had a serious crash, but instead of damaging his spine further, the impact readjusted it, restoring the use of his legs. This remarkable stroke of luck, as well as an improvement in his lung, allowed him to return to South Africa in late 1901. In 1910, having served in South Africa and Nigeria, Trinchard became ill and returned home. On recovery, he received a letter from a friend, a pilot, persuading him to learn to fly. Aged 39, he was just one year below the maximum age for pilot students. He enrolled immediately. Two and a half weeks and 64 minutes flight time later, he gained a certificate. He encountered slight difficulty due to partial blindness in one eye, but kept this a secret from his instructors. At the outset of the First World War, Trenchard held the rank of officer commanding the military wing of the Royal Flying Corps. He was placed in charge of numbers 2 and 3 squadrons, which provided the army with reconnaissance photos and spotted for artillery. After being promoted to the rank of Brigadier General, Trenchard was appointed officer commanding the RFC, where he decided to make the RFC a combat force. Whilst they had some success, the superior German aircraft caused constant loss. In December 1917, he was appointed Chief of Air Staff of the newly created Air Ministry. Unfortunately, whilst he liked the position, he could not stand his boss, Lord Rothermere, who headed the Air Ministry. He resigned on April 10, 1918. The Prime Minister, Lloyd George, found out about this, and Rothermere resigned as a result. On the 8th of May, Trenchard accepted command of the Independent Air Force, a subset of the RAF, the RAF having been founded on the 1st of April 1918. He was reappointed as Chief of Air Staff in 1919. Trenchard angered the Army Council by creating new ranks for officers that were different to the Army as he wanted to emphasise the split of the RAF from the Army. In 1922 he founded RAF College Cranwell. Trenchard made huge contributions to the Royal Air Force, establishing a university air squadron and increasing the size and strength of the RAF. On the 1st of January 1927, he was promoted to Marshal of the Royal Air Force. Three years later, he felt he had contributed enough and he officially resigned from the RAF in 1930. After leaving the RAF, he became Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police in 1931, and during his time as Commissioner, he established Hendon College. He left the Met in November of 1935. After the outbreak of World War II, Trenchard was offered at least five jobs, ranging from pilot training to general officer commanding the entirety of British land, sea and air in the case of a home invasion. He declined all job offers. Instead, he visited RAF units, criticised Neville Chamberlain's half-hearted government in the House of Lords and even acted as unofficial inspector general for the RAF. In this way, despite his lack of an official RAF job, he continued to use his influence to highlight the importance of a strong, powerful air force. 
Hugh Trenchard will forever be remembered for his invaluable contributions, from his role in establishing an independent air force to his offensive air tactics, all of which earn him the title the father of the Royal Air Force.